Okay. But that was actually an introduction to uh, to the keynote, which will be slightly shorter than, than scheduled, I hope, which is about cities and energy. Um, city is an intestine, meaning that there's a lot of energy, uh, energy, water, material, and food going into it, and a lot of waste from these flows is produced. And there's a real problem if this city wouldn't, wouldn't be fed anymore. So uh, we should really start to think about this. And why? Because we have occasions already where this happened, especially energy supplies have been halted by various reasons, technical, uh, natural disasters, but also like human interventions, uh, whether it be a terrorist or a, a Russian president. It's all to do with uh, uh, hampering supplies. So also uh, made clear by many people at SASB 2012, uh, we really need to aim for resilient cities. It's the main theme for the coming years, I think. And, well, this is a model I will explain while going through it, but uh, we should think about cities as systems where uh, flows are going in and out, and we have to get control over them. And it actually starts with knowing your figures, so you need to know the data. So that's why cities really have to start accounting. And this is a table which you can't see what it actually says, but look at the 13%. This was the start of an island in Denmark called Samsø, who decided to become energy neutral and who started to uh, do the accounting first to understand where the problems lie. Well, after a few years, um, seven years to be exact, uh, and with a lot of investments, helped by some funding, but also invested by the people themselves, they came to 99% of self-sufficiency in energy. Actually, they produce more electricity than they need, but they still use some uh, fossil fuels for the cars and mainly for the ferry boats. So that's, uh, uh, but actually right now it's energy neutral, it's carbon neutral, and now they're working on a new project to become fossil free. Uh, I think all cities should start to do that. And it's also about understanding the city then, understanding the energy demands and energy potentials. This is a map of Rotterdam, so uh, right in the middle you see Wim Bakens sitting and CIB, um, and uh, they use more heat than they can actually uh, gain from the sun and from geothermal sources. So we have to do something in the city. And it starts with reducing the energy demand. We have a lot of existing buildings already which are not really energy efficient. This is not a situation, of course, in the Netherlands only. It's, it's, it's uh, across the world. So we have to transform our current buildings into energy neutral ones eventually. Um, maybe not all monuments will have to look like this. So this wouldn't be allowed, of course. Uh, but this is just an occasion of a non-monumentous building that can be refurbished to an energy producing one. So it is possible and it can be done in a architecturally pleasing way. And there's more examples of old existing buildings that have been transformed into very energy efficient new ones. Not always energy neutral, but much better than what they used to be. And if the new buildings then become energy neutral, we are in the right direction. The second step is to think about reusing waste flows and exchanging heat and cold, or cascading the different temperature levels. Um, we have to understand that the city consists of many various functions of buildings with uh, uh, energy demands that differ uh, dramatically. If you look at these bar schemes next to the images, so this is a hospital, supermarket, office, dwelling, ice skating rink, uh, shop, uh, school, and swimming pool, you see that the demand for heat, cold, and electricity per square meter is different in every case. So in that sense, it, it's not very smart to try to improve buildings as separate entities, but to think about exchanging. So start to think about possible exchange of heat and cold and electricity peaks between the different uh, functions. And it can be done, for instance, for heat by smart heat grids that exchange heat between uh, places that have an excess uh, to places where there's a shortage. Then the third, th third step. Uh, a city um, has to ha interact with the region because they can't uh, produce their own food, they can't produce their own energy completely. So a city needs its environs. It needs more space to get to uh, these uh, amenities. And we could, for instance, think about how to make wastewater and nutrients for uh, areas around the city that could be processed again and, and uh, made into 
for instance, biofuels or uh, food. Huh? So wastewater that is actually becoming food or nutrients for uh, plants that get back to the city as food. So there's many opportunities, uh, but the city will really have to collaborate a lot with their environs. For we have to understand that if we don't have fossil fuels anymore or the, they become too expensive, we have to solve it on the ground. We can't go into uh, the soil anymore and find these uh, very handy packages. So energy becomes space, and that means that energy becomes one of the struggling factors of how to use space on the ground. Um, and this deals, of course, with the far, fourth step, which is uh, generate renewable energy. It can be done in the city, but it can also be done in the city, city region. And I think it should because electricity needs a lot of space. Well, if you look at normal cities, even these, this city is uh, uh, Florence, which you see on the background. We had a workshop there, and Florence even understands that they have to become more self-sufficient again. They used to be self-sufficient in the past, in the Middle Ages, and now they are n absolutely not. So they think about it, and there's plenty of space, of course, but you wouldn't want to touch upon every monument there. Nevertheless, there's a lot of uh, possibilities, and we hardly use these uh, potentials. So uh, uh, I'm sorry for people with a different religion, but this is just a joke for the Christian ones. Thou shalt produce is what we really have to do, and uh, we have to do it in cities, but also in, uh, in the surroundings of cities. So I think it's the whole package of all these steps that will be necessary, and uh, I hope that this webinar uh, with the coming presentations will also help to uh, get to these conclusions. And um, uh, well, thank you for your attention.